Buenas noches, Jackie. Gracias por estar en el canal. Bienvenido. Yo quisiera preguntarte sobre cómo ha sido el proceso de tu evolución desde que iniciaste en la carrera de cines para adultos hasta ahora. ¿Qué es lo que más aprendió? Ok, Jackie, starting with how do you see the process of your, let's, let's say, evolution um, the adult film industry, but in your beginnings and what you are doing now? So, yeah, that's a good question. From when I started, it kind of was just working with my best friend. Uh, we collaborated. Um, she was a webcam model. And then I kind of transitioned into making videos and then kind of just transitioned into us working with other companies, other performers, and then making a company ourselves. So now we're kind of just focused on um, just, I guess, enjoying it a little bit. Just uh, we We don't work too hard, I guess you could say. We enjoy trying to make good, comfortable content. Uh, we're not a big, large-scale production company. Um, but, yeah, I guess uh, still a pretty small-scale small, small scale creator. We can say that it's like uh, like, a, like the indie film industry that you are doing in, in the independent way, more, more calm, because sometimes people think to refer to big industry, you know, very tense, very... So we can refer in that way. Okay. Yeah, some of the I, productions are long days. Sorry, go ahead. I will translate. John, es muy importante lo que nos dice Kayaki, porque y creo que tú lo sabes muy bien, ¿no? Él comenzó, es un dueto que él hace él con una, una otra persona y que empezó en las webcam. Y esto llevó a que él haga esto, pero él dice, y yo le estaba preguntando si era como hacer así independiente, dijo que sí, porque dice que es algo más relajado. No es con la presión de grandes compañías. Entonces yo creo que ese es el factor diferenciador. Dice que incluso se sienten bien haciendo lo que hacen. Oh, qué increíble. Thank you, Jackie. Yo quiero iniciar con también... Es bastante importante preguntarle sobre cómo usted ha percibido el lente en las historias del cine para adultos. Yo, yo comprendo que eres también director. ¿Cómo percibes de pronto manejar un poco la perspectiva pues de la cámara jugar con ella okay and now in the most technical aspect how do you see or do you perceive the change of the lens we know that the use of lens has changed in the industry so how do you perceive that the lens the camera so i try to continue to upgrade my equipment i first started with a phone which a lot of uh, small creators are using and then slowly upgraded to a, a sony point and shoot camera and then now i use a a74 it's a sony with a 24 to 70 g master 2 lens and there's some companies that use you know vr virtual reality cameras that have um, silicone ears for the audio and it's 360 degrees so if you were wearing a headset you can look in all directions and and you're it's like you're there in the same room so i'm not sure if the industry is going to transition and progress that way to like virtual reality and if the camera equipment's going to continue to get bigger and um like that kind of stuff or if the side of the small creators with you know pov on their phone or with a tripod I don't know if that's going to continue, but I kind of feel like both are, are you know, right at pace with each other. Um, it depends on the audience. Some people are more into that cinematic feel, and then some people are more into that realism, the amateur content. So I think both will continue to survive. Decías para un poco más de cine para adultos, pero para estar con escenas con mills también con gigs o más de todo ya es algo más distinto eso es lo que quería plasmar ah I understand it better no Johnny was asking that it's okay that if you wanna do mm, yes keep trying like more genres I, I don't know if we can say genres yeah. or like gigs mills more 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 open more stuff yeah of course and just recently I worked with um, this performer, Jasmine Sharini, and she's kind of like blasting off on the browser side. And um, she's done a couple scenes with them. And I think she said she was Punjabi, which is on the border of India and Pakistan. And she said even herself that she was really happy to be able to represent um, that side of the world. Not many performers from there and inspire other people. 
Um, so it's, yeah, it, I'm really open to working with a lot of people. And I think it's really cool that people have found ways to express themselves. And sometimes they come from a culture that kind of like looks down upon that. So they're being really brave and outspoken and kind of like setting an example for some people. If they want to pursue that, they can live a happy life and they can communicate that with their friends and family. Wow. I will keep in touch with that because I'm interested on that in, in that actress. I will translate yeah. that. Uh, but it was a great uh, answer. No, John, muy buena pregunta. Y que incluso mencionó una actriz. Um, eh, ella dice que siente muy orgullosa. Una actriz que está trabajando con, que trabajó con, con, ahorita con él, que es de la India, de Punjabi. Y dice que ella se siente muy bien de que esta misma industria le esté dando una forma distinta de que la gente como vea el país y todo. Lo que puede ser una respuesta pues controversial, pero muy buena, ¿no? Pues, ah, sí, excelente. Es una respuesta muy buena. Y más que todo, y quisiera preguntar porque fíjate que en las historias que manejan la cámara, eso es una buena implementación para poder hacer recurrir a muchas story medias. Pero quisiera preguntarte si deseas explorar un poco más el campo en Latinoamérica. También quisiera preguntarte si de pronto, este, ¿cómo usted ha visto que, ha, que se ha implementado el periodismo del cine para adultos? Ok, two questions. I will start with the first one. Uh, yeah, man, and now that you're talking about worldwide, uh, Latin America, maybe? Yeah, I mean, for sure. There's a couple of performers that I talk to uh, via social media. Um, they live in Colombia and Costa Rica, um, just to name a couple. Um, I think there's some in Venezuela as well. Um, and I haven't personally worked with any of them. But they're international. Uh, makes it pretty difficult sometimes. But we do talk about collaborating in the future. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of look at myself still in that small creator position, but I'd like to, in the future, progress to where I can travel and and help other small creators, you know, grow and, and get more views and share fans. I will do the next question, but when you, when finally the Colombian women is on, is on, is on, yes, in the project, let Just know. In fact, in the channel, we got two of the greatest, no? you know, Esperanza and, and Veronica. Ver, Vero Leal is huge in Europe. I, I, I know, do you, you know them? Both, no? Uh, Esperanza Rosa. Gomez and Veronica Leal. No, oh, man, Veronica Leal. Let, let, let us in fact, I will tell John that I uh, shared you that interview. She okay. is the most viewed interview in the channel because she is huge in Europe. And she's from, she's from our, our hometown. Yeah, no, it's awesome. beautiful. And the next question. Yeah. And the next question. How okay. do you see, like, the job of journalism inside now the industry? In fact, I, I had to congratulate John because John is doing, and it's an honor to be a translator, uh, great interviews with the industry, you know, showcasing more aspects in the In, in the professional scene as a as, as it is as a serious job so how yeah. do you see the role of journalism now in the industry i'm honestly really shocked that there's not a bigger channel that is focusing on the adult industry specifically like in america they have tmz and i'm sure there's equivalent all around the world um in each country for their entertainment news but like our entertainment news it's It's um, it's just like the Hollywood stars and TikTok stars, and, and it's a really popular channel. A lot of people watch it. A lot of people subscribe to that information, and follow along with it. So I'm surprised there's not a news channel that focuses primarily on the adult industry, and and even could translate it and broadcast it in different ways. Um, you know, social media like YouTube. Even though it is the adult industry, there's ways to talk about it like we are now professional and and be able to broadcast it. So I'm surprised that there's not an outlet that covers it, but I think you're doing a great job. And if you continue, I think you could easily be like the number one person doing this. First, thank you. And second, I will second that. And I will tell uh, uh, not only your answer, but I will tell my friend John that he become that media. Uh, I, I, I think he needs to be shaken, but I know he got, a really great potential, so yeah, man. Bueno, John, esto viene con hasta con llamado atención, pero bueno, lo primero es que sí, de hecho, se vienen actrices, yo le dije que las deje saber, 
después obvio, Colombia, eh, Costa Rica, parecen hermosas, y, y Venezuela, ¿no? Yo le dije que en el canal estuvieron, tú sabes, dos de las más grandes de Colombia. Dice que pues sabe de Esperanza, pero no Verónica. Obviamente, hazle saber de Verónica. Y John dice que está sorprendido que no exista un medio que cubra de manera seria como se cubre esta industria. No existe. Pero dice que lo estás haciendo muy bien con el canal. Entonces yo le dije que sería bueno que pues tú te conviertas en ese medio. Entonces ahí te, te la dejamos ahí. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Of course. De hecho, bueno, yo quisiera preguntarte sobre si hay algún momento en el que puedan publicar de pronto un libro sobre diferente, tú sabes, sobre iluminación, qué mal que se van a estar por acá en el canal, pero sí, obviamente, la pregunta de Seba sería si hay alguna oportunidad para que puedas implementar cursos sobre ello, eh, también para publicar un libro. Coméntame. Y la haré saber qué es de Seba, es de Seba, ¿sí? Ah. Ok, this question is for the friend that we told you, the, the one that he cannot log in, that is John Sebastian. Uh, mm, yes, he, he sends you a big hi. And mm, do you feel or like, no, no, publishing, or maybe if, if you are doing it, like doing courses or something, a boot, or how to illuminate, how to be a um, director of photography, cinematographer? In the industry, because we know for the actresses, the actors that we had interviewed with that is different. It's not, yes, it, we know that photography is the same one, pero, but it's not the same to il illuminate uh, a set of scene in this industry that in cinema. So I don't know, do you, you will do it or you are doing it or you are doing courses? Tell us. That could be really interesting because a lot of the things that are in, um, that are taught in photography and cinema cinematography or, or don't really translate to adult films that well. I've done, I think over 200 films and the ones that are done very like clean and with nice lighting and really cinematography like, I don't know if that's the proper word, but the ones that are just super movie-esque, they don't do well. And the ones that are just on a phone and on a webcam and kind of just show the real thing that's going on there. They, they do surprisingly well, like way more. And they take a lot of less effort. And in that aspect, it's like, well, if people want to see that. I want to show them what they want to see. And then the other side, it, it really looks cool and it's really artistic. Um, but it's not necessarily what people can relate to because not all of us live in a, a big, beautiful mansion with a spiral staircase and the, and the really cool aestheticness of, of all of that. And it's really cool to watch it in movies sometimes, but um, it doesn't translate completely. So sometimes I thought about, yeah, maybe talking about what you have in front of you, your phone is more than enough. And if you're stopping yourself because you want studio quality lighting and this camera and this lens, then you might not ever need that. And by even upgrading to that, you might realize that, My other stuff was just as good, if not better. And, you know, you would never even get to that point, honestly, if you don't start. So with what you got is really, really well. So, yeah, I guess in the future, it could be something I could think about doing one of those how to's. But I don't personally feel like I'm in a position now um, where I'm, I don't know, smart enough or accomplished enough to, to coach people. I've been nominated several times, but I haven't won anything. And, Um, I've only, you know, done a couple of years in the mainstream side where I've, I've known some performers that have been in for 10, 15 years. So I would, I would assume that they would be the ones doing the, the master courses, but they're still, you know, making movies. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I might feel like I had some, a lot to learn if, if I do it now, I feel like I, I might not provide the best information. So maybe in a few years when I feel like I've learned even more and can provide more accurate information. But for now, the best thing I can tell people is what you got is, is, is great as far as the filming side. And when it comes to working with someone, it's consents 100% the most important thing, people feeling comfortable and safe. And then having a good team, you know, developing it from there, someone filming or someone editing. And because it really, when you do it all by yourself, it, 
It does burn you out. Before I translate, uh, well, this interview can serve because you you get you get great answers. And in fact, you are right, man. I won't I won't mention the companies, but the companies that I follow when they started doing like beat, flashy production, and uh, no, no, unfollow. <laughs> you are right. I prefer the you know the, the real the real stuff. Yes. <laughs> I, if I want to see beautiful photography, I will watch uh, an erotic movie or another, another movie, no, uh, yeah. you know. Ok, I will translate. John dice que él ahorita no se siente en posición, pero dice que sí lo pensó en un futuro. Sabes que ha sido nominado a varios premios, ¿no? Yeah. Dice, dice que incluso ha trabajado con gente que lleva muchos años más que él y aún así está el proceso. Dice que lo importante es mmm, que incluso muchas veces lo que se hace con un celular es hasta mejor. Dice, y yo estoy de acuerdo con él, que no le gustan las grandes producciones, porque el mundo real, uno no va a estar en ese acto, en una mansión. Él no dice, yo le dije que estoy de acuerdo y que dijo algo muy chévere. Lo importante es que siempre hagas esto en equipo. O sea, siempre tiene que haber un buen editor, que cada quien haga su trabajo. Me parece la mejor respuesta y buenísimo para Sebas por ahí. Excelente. Bueno, hay dos últimas preguntas que quiero pues enfatizar. No es para documentar, claro que no, sino ya es una pregunta pues bastante diferente y es sobre que en las estrellas de cine para adultos siempre se han destacado pues en saberlo mucho y eso ahora en gusto cinematográfico o libros eh, cuál es su película favorita su libro favorito o su top 3 de series uy sería mejor más bien un top 3 en general porque quisiera estar sorprendido qué tal que él nos recomienda una buena película para adultos no lo sabe top 3 en general ¿Sí? No, una, hagámoslo así, una película, una serie y un libro. Ok. Eh, tricky question, but John always does it, so let's zoom out because um, as you can see in this channel we have interviewed with uh, a lot of people from a lot of backgrounds and a lot of industries. Adult film industry, uh, cine, uh, regular industry. Bueno, we want to know the, the, your, your taste, the taste of the, of the guesses. Being Uh, you can mention uh, adult adult films or other other types of films. A favorite movie, a favorite series, and a favorite book. Whatever okay. you want to say. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, there was something I was going to mention, but I guess we'll jump right into the favorites there. So, favorite movie, I'd have to give it to Forrest Gump. It's uh, have you ever seen that movie? I love it. I I watch yeah. it every time I feel, I, I I travel. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a classic. It probably makes me cry every time I watch it too. But uh, favorite food? I'm gonna have to say pizza. That's uh, from the Italian roots on my dad's side of the family. I can pretty much always go for pizza. And then favorite place? Is that what you said? Favorite city? No, I I mentioned favorite series and favorite food. But I, it's great that you mentioned a favorite place and a favorite food. So don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Was it said series? Was that what series or it? yes, the TV series or streaming series? Oh, yeah. But you can mention a, a series of the adult films. If I want, I got a favorite. My favorite was Mike in Brazil, but on those years, but uh, the first the first season, not the last seasons. I okay. I love it. Have you seen Money Heist? Yes. Oh my god! Yeah, like, one of the best, right? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah, I probably I watched that I think a year or two ago, and I think the um, the sequel just came out. Um, forgot what, it, but yeah, it's really good. If anyone's watching and you haven't heard of it yet, you're missing. Okay, in favorite book. Favorite book. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting one. Um, no, no worry. That one's gonna be tough. Um, I, I haven't read a lot of books recently. Mostly now it's all like business books and self-help books, like <laughs> try to like, you know, help yourself be a better speaker and stuff I'm doing right now. Um, but when growing up, I'd probably say I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to think on that. Like I've read like Dan Brown books, the conspiracy theory ones. And, and I read, you know, when I was younger, Animorphs, the uh, people turn into animals. I don't know if you ever saw that. They had the really cool covers, like holographic person transforming into a, an animal. Um, but yeah, for I guess if I had to say most recent favorite book, um, the five second rule. That's by Mel Robbins. 
And it talks about how whenever you have an instinct, like I should go to the gym, you should just say, you should just say five, four, three, two, one, and do it um, mm-hmm. because your instinct was right. And if you wait longer than five seconds, you're probably going to talk yourself out of doing that. So if it's like, I should email that person, you've got five seconds to do it, you know, like, or whatever it is. And just learning that kind of uh, mentality kind of gets you more focused on the things that you actually do want to accomplish instead of listening to the other side of your brain. That's like, or you could sit here and do nothing. So yeah, I'd say the five second rule by Mel Robbins. That's a really good book. Thank you. John, película Forrest Gun. Serie Money Heist, creo que te gusta. Esto pregunto que, le, que si la conocemos, le dijimos que obvio. Y el libro, hay un libro que se llama La regla de los cinco segundos, donde dices que si tú quieres hacer algo, aplica esa regla, que si después de cinco segundos no lo hiciste, te vas a lamentar. Excelente. Muy buen libro. Entonces, por último, ¿cómo define su trabajo él en una palabra? En esa final. How do you define your work, your career in one word? Uh, team, for sure. You can't, definitely can't do it by yourself. I mean, 100%. I'm, it would be a different audience if you were doing it by yourself. Um, but yeah, it's a team for sure. And it goes beyond the scope of whatever whatever I thought um, before with makeup artists and depending on how big you get, of course. But even just if it's you and someone else, there's a team. And um, because if I had to think of another word, it would be trust because there's a lot of trust that goes between two people when you're filming something that's going to be on the internet. and you're representing each other and you're respecting each other and it's it's a lot of trust and it's um it's one of those things that yeah it's it's not for everybody and i i definitely recommend everyone think long and hard talk to their close friends um and don't just jump right into something like that um but that goes for anything like movies new job anything just uh Definitely consider it and make sure you're around people you feel comfortable with. Good team and trust. Those would be the two, two words I would assume or put together with the career. And sounds way in Spanish. Team means equipo and trust means confianza. John, equipo y confianza. Bueno, ya aquí este es tu momento para que digas tus redes sociales. Un saludo para Colombia. ¿Cómo lo estoy? Jackie, the camera is yours. So you can say your social media so people can follow you. So people stay close to your project. So go ahead. Okay. Gracias, both of you. This, I really appreciate this opportunity. I really appreciate you translating. It's been really cool. I've never done anything like this. So I think what you guys are doing is really unique. And I hope you guys the best of success with it. Uh, if anyone wants to follow me on Instagram, it's just real Jackie Knight on Twitter or X. Now it's Hey Jackie Knight. And then Pretty much Google, you can just search Jackie Knight. Um, otherwise, definitely follow these guys and subscribe to these guys. And thank you so much for watching. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, man. It was an honor to translate. I will that, say that to John. John, que dice que nunca había estado en una entrevista donde la han traducido, dice que un honor. John, al final hay unas palabras que las puedes incluso usar para a esta entrevista. Dice que sigan, síganlo a él, pero sigan que nos sigan a nosotros. Lo dijo así. Entonces, thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you so much. No, man, thank you so much. Have a good weekend, man. Thank you so much. Gracias. Have a good no, weekend. Gracias. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Adios.